Welcome back to EduTube. Science is simple. In today's video, we're going to explore cells. We'll cover what cells are and what they contain. Specifically, we'll look at the similarities and differences between animal and plant cells, both are eukaryotic cells, and then we'll compare them with bacterial cells, which are prokaryotic. By the end of this video, you should be able to label the different parts of a cell and describe the function of each part. Let's start with the basics. What are cells? You can think of cells as the basic building blocks of life. They are the smallest units of life that can replicate independently. If we took an animal or a plant, their cells can divide into two, then four, and so on. This process allows the organism to grow or repair itself. But in some cases, like in bacteria, each individual cell is a complete organism. So when bacterial cells divide, they're not just growing, they're actually reproducing because each new cell is an entirely new organism. In contrast, animals and plants are multicellular organisms, meaning they're made up of many cells. When their cells divide, it's usually for growth or to replace dead or damaged cells, not to create new organisms. The human body is made up of many types of cells. The skin contains skin cells, the blood contains blood cells, the brain contains nerve cells, and so on. The human body contains hundreds of different cell types, and it's estimated that an average adult has over 40 trillion cells. Now let's look at the structure of cells. We'll begin by comparing animal and plant cells side by side to highlight their similarities and differences. To understand cell structure, we need to look at the different parts that make up a cell. These smaller parts are called organelles. First, both animal and plant cells are surrounded by a cell membrane. This membrane controls which substances can pass in and out of the cell. It allows some chemicals to pass through, but blocks others. This helps the cell maintain the right internal conditions. Both cell types also contain a nucleus. They are eukaryotes. The nucleus holds the cell's genetic material. DNA and controls all the cell's activities. You can think of it as the control center of the cell. Next, both cells are filled with a jelly-like substance called cytoplasm. This is where all the other organelles are suspended. Cytoplasm is also the site of many chemical reactions that keep the cell alive and functioning. You can imagine cytoplasm like the water inside a water balloon, but with a thicker, jelly-like consistency. Both animal and plant cells also contain lots of mitochondria. Mitochondria are like the cell's power stations. They release energy through a process called aerobic respiration. They break down sugars like glucose to release the energy the cell needs to function. Finally, both types of cells contain many ribosomes. Ribosomes are the site of protein synthesis, which means they are responsible for making proteins. Proteins are essential molecules that the cell uses for structure, repair, and function. Now, everything we've just mentioned is found in both animal and plant cells. But plant cells also have a few extra structures that animal cells don't. Plant cells have a rigid cell wall that surrounds the entire cell, outside the cell membrane. It's made from a tough material called cellulose, which provides structure and support. This wall is really important, it helps the cell stay in shape and prevents it from bursting if too much water enters. A large part of many plant cells is taken up by a central vacuole. This is a fluid-filled sac that contains cell sap, a mix of sugars, salts, and water. The vacuole acts as a storage space for nutrients and waste. Lastly, plant cells contain chloroplasts, the site of photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is the process by which plants use sunlight to produce sugars like glucose. To do this, chloroplasts contain a green pigment called chlorophyll, which absorbs light energy. And yes, it's this chlorophyll that gives plant leaves their green color. The last thing we need to look at are bacterial cells. As we mentioned earlier, bacteria are prokaryotes, meaning they consist of a single prokaryotic cell. Because they're made of just one cell, we call them unicellular organisms, which simply means one-celled organisms. Just like the eukaryotic cells we've seen so far, bacterial cells also have cell membrane, cell wall, cytoplasm, and ribosomes. So, structurally, they share some key features with animal and plant cells. 
However, there are also important differences. Bacterial cells never have mitochondria or chloroplasts. They also don't store their genetic material inside a nucleus. Instead of a nucleus, bacteria have a single circular strand of DNA that floats freely in the cytoplasm. This contains all the genes the bacterium needs to survive and reproduce. You might see this structure labeled as the circular chromosome or the nucleoid, but they all refer to the same thing, a large loop of DNA. Some bacteria also contain small, additional rings of DNA called plasmids. These carry extra genes, such as those for antibiotic resistance. The bacteria don't use these genes all the time, but they can be very useful in certain conditions. Finally, some bacteria have flagella. These are long, thread-like structures that stick out from the cell. Flagella can rotate, allowing the bacteria to move through liquids. In short, they act like tiny motors, helping the bacteria swim around. The shape of bacteria may be spherical, rod-like, or spiral. Now, let's compare the animal cell, plant cell, and bacterial cell. Can you label the organelles in each cells? If this video helped you understand cell structure better, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon so you never miss a bite-sized science lesson from EduTube. Until next time, keep learning, stay curious, and remember, science is simple.